Hello everyone, uh, this is Brian McComas. I want to go over something really, really quick, okay? Um, I debate a lot, and one of the reasons why I'm so loved among my colleagues and my friends at debate is because I bring a sense of logic that a lot of debaters only bring to the table for a little while and then their emotions boil up and they and they throw that logic out the window <clears throat> so let me give you an example um, now I debate on many many subjects one of the subjects that I debate on is the dangers of Islam the what the Quran says and and we're not getting into the hadifas we're not we're not dealing with the hadifa yet but if somebody wants to bring up the Quran and the hadifas I will I'll throw down that's fine <clears throat> so here's my position when I come into a debate I lay down that I am opposing the Quran as a book as as a religion and as an instructional manual for Muslims period I lay that down I'm very uh, upfront <clears throat> and quick to state that my my opinion is that the Quran is full of instructions and commands that go into this day from ancient days to this day that instruct Muslims to do negative things and that the Quran instructs hate and violence, enslavement, killing, oppression and, and, and a multitude of other things. On top of this I also state that within that opinion that there is no verses in the Quran whatsoever that supports the idea of a Muslim being authentically and honestly friendly and nice to a non-Muslim. Now, <clears throat> that's what I lay down. Now, within that last statement, though, there are passages in the Quran within Sharia law that does allow for a Muslim to be kind and to be nice to non-Muslims in a non-Muslim country and that's for the purposes of jihad and stage one or stage two of Sharia law. So, therefore, it is not honest and it is not a friendly, honest, open relationship. Now, that's my opinion. So, then I go to the other person. And most of the people that I debate on Islam are always going to be people that are completely either liberals, they don't know anything about the Quran, and they Wikipedia, uh, and the debate only lasts a few minutes. Or I'm dealing with a Muslim who has spent time, and even uh, an Iman, and they've spent time studying Islam. So they come at me with a totally different opinion. So I listen to their opinion, and usually their opinion is, <clears throat> I say usually because there's only been one time when somebody was actually honest, and they're like, you're all Muslims, you're in, you're, you're, uh, you're all kefir, and you're all kefir, and you're all going to die. But most of the time, especially in America... The other person opposing my opinion has the opinion that the Quran is a good, peaceful, loving book, blah, 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 blah. ISIS and Hamas have nothing to do with Islam, or they're extremists, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so <clears throat> at that point, what I do during the debate to absolutely destroy them, and this works every single time, is I state the following. My name is Brian McComas. I have the opinion that the Quran is pure evil and teaches instructions and commands for Muslims to do pure evil, that there is nothing in the Quran that states that what Hamas and ISIS are doing today is against the laws of a Muslim, and that the Quran actually states and commands a Muslim to do the things that Hamas and ISIS are doing. <clears throat> With that said, I then turned to my opponent and I said, I say their name, and I say, now they have the opinion opposite of my opinion, and their opinion is that I am full of shit, or I am misled, and that the Quran is full of beautiful passages, peace, love, harmony, and hugging trees. At that point, I then turn to the other person, who's completely an ego. They've left, they have left logic. They are completely an ego, usually. And I will say, what I just said, is this, is this a true statement? that I completely oppose the Quran and that you completely embrace it and you say that it's beautiful and that I'm wrong and I'm saying that you're wrong. 90% of the time, that person will state, yes, this is true. I got you. At this point in the debate, we both can then therefore agree 
to disagree. We are then in agreement, so do not tell me that anything that comes afterwards is simply me wanting to argue with you and disprove something just because of emotions, because that's not true at all. Because just a second ago, they agreed. They agreed with me that what came out of my mouth was accurate. Now, within that, <clears throat> next, the next phase to destroy is that we now have two debaters. Usually it's two. I've actually been on round tables full of people and on radio shows. So when someone says uh, something else, I go into part two. And this is before the real debating comes out with the references and everything else. And yes, I will tear apart the references. I, I don't know why, but a lot of debaters don't tear apart the other person's um uh, reference when they get it. So then my second phase is, I have an opinion, they have an opinion, okay? That's true. Our opinions are completely different. That's true. Therefore, logically, one of our opinions is completely wrong. Is this statement true? They will usually answer yes. Aha, now there's a second. Now this is what lays down the law. Now we've established that there's two different opinions, two completely different opinions. We At first, I get them to agree that the statement that I made is true. I oppose the Quran. I say that it's, it's trash, it's garbage, um, it, it promotes violence, it does not promote peace and friendliness and honest, good relationships between Muslims and non-Muslims. They, however, have the opposite end view. Now, they agree on that. Then they go to my next question. <clears throat> We're two different people with two different opinions. We claim that our opinions are based on the Quran, so therefore one of us is lying or misled, and the other is being honest. And uh, almost every time the person will agree to that second statement, even sometimes when they don't agree to the first one, they will agree to the second one. Therefore, this is now two times, or at least one time, that we have agreed in the debate. Now here's where the smackdown comes. Now that we have proven that there are two opinions, and that both of us are saying that our opinions are based on one source, there's a problem. Now, that problem is what they've already agreed to. That one of us is lying and misled, and the other one is telling the truth. So who's who? That's when the references come out. Every single time that I've ever debated a real Muslim, every time, they back out. They completely back out. I have so many screenshots of where somebody is supposed to do a public debate with me, and instead they get a hold of me in private, and they want to hear my side of what I'm debating. And they realize, these Muslims realize that I'm very well educated in the Haditha and in every bit of the Quran, and they chicken out, and I have the screenshots to prove it. And then they back out. They don't even want to tell people what's going on. They claim that they've had a family emergency, and then next week... I'm like, okay, do you want to debate? No. We set it up for next month? No. We set it up uh, on radio shows? No. We, sh we set it up even on Facebook. I do a lot of debating on Facebook. <clears throat> when it comes to a liberal who is a non-Muslim, however, it's a totally different story. They get angry. They get fussy. They want to fight. They never want to look at the references. Now, you as the audience, you have to remember what I said at the beginning of this video. You have to remember that what I've stated is that I have an opinion, and my opinion is, and I lay it out, and then their opinion is, and I lay it out, and we've already agreed the statement is true, and then the second part is that we've agreed that we both have opinions based off one thing, so therefore one is lying or misled about the truth, while the other one, on the other hand, has the truth. You as the audience then have to verify that second part. Who is lying? Who is telling the truth? Who is misled? Who is educated? I'm telling everybody who's watching this video, if you are confused about Islam, if you are, if you have never even heard of Islam, uh, living under a rock, you've been living under a rock or whatever, and you've never even heard of Islam, if you hate Islam, if you love Islam, if you embrace Islam, if you can't stand Islam, study Islam. I don't care who you are, study it. Why study it? Because I'm the guy telling you that my opinion is based off of that reference. I want you to pick up that reference and read it. And I want you to see for yourself. Somebody who is full of fear, somebody who is just full of hate and they hate a Muslim simply because they're a Muslim, would not tell you to pick up the Quran and take Islamic studies and read it and study it. Now think really hard about that and go back to my second point. One person has an opinion, the other person has an opposite opinion. Both people claim their opinions are based off one reference, the Quran. 
One's lying and misled, the other is telling the truth.